What's going on, everybody? So I get asked a lot to do like some kind of guide for side decking, and to me, it just kind of feels like an impossible task because of how just complex and deep the subject is. Like I could do like ten one-hour videos on various aspects of, of side decking, probably. Um, so uh, a, a couple days ago, though, a teammate of mine asked me an interesting question, which is, Carpath, how do you side in your decks? Because I never know, or he, he said to me, I never know how to side with your decks because, like, they're just, like, unusual and unfamiliar, and I don't know what to take out, and I don't know what to put in. So I figured today we'll do a, like, siding with Carpath video where I go over how I side with um, the decks that I am most known for to try and help out people because, you know, I always I always like to see people play in my decks. So we gotta, we gotta... Uh, do what we can to help them out in terms of uh, figuring out the right way to play post board. So that's what this video is going to be today. All right, so the general format of this video I think I've decided on is I'm going to go over and explain like every side deck card, and then I'm going to like pick a random like meta deck and pretend I'm siding against it uh, game two, and then we're just going to like swap out what I would take out and put in what I would put in so I can kind of show you. Um, one thing that's not going to be in this is we're not going to be making assumptions about whether I'm going first or second, which could slightly like play into how I would side. Certain matchups, you're definitely taking out Dust Shoot going second and whatnot, so that's just something to keep in mind. But usually it doesn't matter a whole lot. To, like maybe it, it matters with like Cyber Dragon and stuff. Like against like Black Wings or something might put that in going second, but not if I'm going first. So keep that in mind. But we're not going to be going into that level of detail. So. Let me just first go over every side deck card we have here. Third, Christia. Um, there are matchups where Christia is auto-win. Um, particularly, Frogs is what you want this for, but, I mean, there's just a ton of ton of conceivable decks where you just want the t to max out on Christia. So, yeah. Uh, second, Sidra. I mean, machine decks, aggro decks, um, that kind of thing. I think we all know what Sidra's for. Consecrated Light. Again, Black Wings, obvious. Um, DD Crow. Just uh, graveyard-based decks. Good for a lot of high roll cheese as well. Electric virus only for dragons, nothing else. Um, do not bring that in versus Machine of Fortress. It's bad. Book of Moon. This tends to be for like Glad Beast or Black Wings, but it can also be. It's just like a generic good like piece of disruption that's good pro sport against a lot of things. If people bring in like Vanity's Fiends, it's good at dealing with that and stuff. So. Um, yeah, Book of Moon's super generic, and I definitely like it in this format. My Body, this is for, like, Game 2 versus Black Wings or Hybrid, um, because of Icarus Attack and Deck Dev and stuff. Um, and then the Traps are exclusively for matchups where you take out Decree. I guess Mind Con could be, or Mind, Mind, Mind Crush, not Mind Con. Mind Crush, you can bring in against, like, a lot of decks. Mind, Mind Crush is good against, like, half the, half the meta, I swear. And then it's also just crazy good versus, um, once again, high roll nonsense, like FTK combo horseshit. Uh, but in general, you're bringing in these traps when you're siding out Decree. So now let's just say hypothetically we're siding against, uh, I think the first deck on my list is Frogs. So let's say we're siding against Frogs with this. Um, generally, I like this deck's Frog matchup a lot better than the regular Fairy deck's Frog matchup because you don't play a bunch of worthless back row that just go neg one into their Monarchs. Uh, you have a bunch of ways of outing dupe locks, you know, just get FTK'd by that. Um, but let's just say we're playing against Frogs. It's still not an amazing matchup, so how are we going to side? Uh, first thing that's kind of obvious is that third Christia needs to come in. Uh, Christia solos that deck, so, I mean, yeah, definitely got definitely to gotta run it. Um, depending on the Frog variant, I may or may not like DD Crow. Let's just, if it's just like Junk Frog or something, I probably just don't even bring this in, to be honest. Um, so let's let's just for the sake of ease let's pretend that it's not Hero Frog. If it's Hero Frog, I bring this in 100%. Um, but let's just pretend it's not. Okay. So we're gonna leave this out. And then Electric Fire. Yeah, none of this is doing anything. I like bringing in the Book of Moons. Um, frog players are randomly bored into Vanity's Fiend, especially against a low back row deck like this. And it stops like dupe lock and it protects your guys from like Brain Con and Econ, which stuff like that's gonna suck uh, a lot. Especially of an established Christia, I think. And then this is a, a matchup where you're taking out the decree. Obviously, we're taking out all the spell trap removal. So just put in all the traps. The only I, I said earlier that traps aren't good versus frogs. However, the power traps, like the 
the Solemn Judgment, the Mirror Force, those are actually pretty good against frogs. Everything else is like bottomless trap hole and deep prison and shit that just sucks against frogs. Um, but these are actually pretty good, the blowout power staples. So we're going to bring them in as well. So I think this is like the, the minimum standard for what we're bringing in versus frogs. I mentioned earlier, we're taking out all the spell trap removal, worthless garbage, useless, don't play it. Uh, when I bring in Third Christie, I swap it for this because we don't want a critical mass of, like, difficult to summon brick boss monsters in our hand. Uh, okay, so now, let's see, that's five cards, and we need, we need, what, two more slots? So, this is where, like, going first, going second might come into it. If we're going second, we'd be, like, more likely to leave Cyber Dragon in. If we're going and, like, take out, you know, some amount of Raikou Sangan Trooper. Um, if we're going first... Instead, might just board out the Sidra, keep in some amount of this. I think in general, Sangan's really bad versus frogs. And since we took out Enrise, we can probably afford to take out uh, the Sangan. So then we just need one more card. And it's probably like Trooper or Raikou. I, it's like one of those. It's hard to say exactly. Like I said, it might depend on whether you're going first or second. But this is probably about what our post board versus frogs would look like um, typically, I would say. Next up, we got another fan favorite, which is KFC. Uh, so let's go over the KFC side deck. I feel like this is one of my more non-standard side decks, probably. I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, we've got the Sidras and the Crows. I mean, these are just always going to be in there, right? Um, they're just too good not to side, in my opinion. Thunder King, uh, mainly for zombies, but you can bring it in versus, like, Glads and, um, you know, hero stuff as well, and it's not bad. So I think Th Thunder King I'm definitely liking as a way of dealing with zombies. I think it's probably the worst matchup I've mentioned before. So Thunder King, very good. Uh, I play Raikou with the Minecon. Raikou's not terrible in this deck, but it's not worth maining. But if you're bringing in Minecon, you should probably play it because if you take Hamster, um, you can get it from your deck. It's the main logic between, behind uh, playing those together. Zombie World, Crazy versus Frogs. Crazy versus a number of decks, actually, in the format. I think it's probably the best field spell to side in this slot. Double Dust Tornado. I mean, it's chainable. So you can Kuraz pop it to get, like, a little plus. Um, and just, like, back row removal. You know, bring it in versus heavy back row decks. Iron Wall. This card is actually crazy against a huge portion of Edison meta decks. It's crazy versus Value Turbo. Crazy versus, like... Anything, any of the Miracle Fusion kind of decks, like Hero Frogs, it blows out for sure. Um, I think it's really good against Zombies as well. Stops all of their, like, Mizuki, stops their Caius. I mean, stops stops, stops a number of things. So uh, definitely like having it. Mind Crush, uh, I just play this on every side. I think it's crazy. I think it's good against so many decks. And then it's also just great against, like, dumb shit that you don't want to lose to. Like I mentioned before, Starlight Road, I generally just... Did I? I didn't have this in my last side. Okay, yeah. I generally side this card if I'm playing Traps, because um, there are just decks that's randomly really good against, like, Light Sworn and Gladiator Beast and stuff. Um, not stuff you necessarily run into... Well, Light Sworn's pretty popular. So, yeah. I mean, there are decks that Road is just randomly good against, and it's a blowout if you bring it in and they're not expecting it. So, I like to side, like, one in a lot of my decks. Um, anyway, so, here we have... I think I decided Zombies is the deck we're going to pretend to side against because I mentioned it's probably the worst matchup. It's probably like the only bad matchup that I can really think of off the top of my head. Um, so how would I side against Zombies? Well, I think DD Crow is really good against that deck. Um, definitely, definitely DD Crow is pretty, pretty strong. I mean, if they have return set, they're going to win no matter what. So I, it doesn't really matter at that point. Uh, otherwise, it completely disrupts their play and it, and can be very, very devastating if you use it at the right time. So definitely going to bring in Crow. Pretty pretty obvious, pretty no-brainer there. Mentioned before, Thunder King is pretty much explicitly for zombies. Turns off Goblin Zombie. Messes with their Synchro plays. Just a very good card to have. Um, beyond that, I think Iron Wall. I think this might be like a one Iron Wall matchup. Because I don't think there's enough stuff it's like good against to play two. It's like Bottomless Trap Hole, Caius... To a lesser extent, a lower dad, and then Mizuki. Book of Life, it also stops. Eh. It's like borderline. I might play two. I don't know. Let's like let's look at the main deck actually and figure out what we're taking out before we completely evaluate this. So we want both cores trag. We probably don't change the main engine too much. What's actual? I hate Sangan in that matchup. 
this is what's weird. There's actually a lot of matchups that I don't like Sangen, even even though I've made it in a lot of my decks. But it just, like, loses to every one of the recruiters that they summon. Like, you just can't hit over it, and then they just, like, tribute for Kai's and mess you up. So I think I could see cutting that. And then, hmm. See, Zombies is a weird deck, because I don't feel like a lot of the cards that we main are particularly bad. Uh, Mirror Force is maybe not the best, because they just, like, combo off and kill you. It's just like they're going to go Dad or Brianak and out your back row anyway. So I think Battle Traps in general are just kind of bad and too slow into zombie matchups. Um, let me think about this. So I think I like using Legacy as just like a flex spot. So we can just take those out. And then we need like what? One more card? What's like a random thing I could just, just cut? <laughs> hmm... See, this is where it might come down to, like, whether we're going first or second. Because it's like, you could take out Dust Shoot. You could take out, like, you know, if, if you're going second, maybe take out one Foolish, one Debris. Um, so that, because you're just not going to open that blowout hand. Um, let's just say, I don't know. What, what would we take out? I guess, like, I feel like Debris plays aren't as good, but, hmm. You can always take out one Karez. It's like really. It, this is why I don't like taking side decking videos because it just feels really like fluid and subjective. So maybe something like this. I, I feel like it would just come down to whether I'm going first or second, though, to be honest, um, with like what that last spot would be. Maybe I would even go double Iron Wall and like take something out, like depending on whether I'm going first or second. So it, it would probably just come down to that. But this is like vaguely what it would look like um, up against zombies. You all forgot this deck existed, didn't you? I did too, which is why I'm not sure I'm going to be able to side with it properly, but we're going to find out. We're going to do this in one take. Anyway, let's go over the entire side. What do I even have here? Uh, Sidra Crow, I mean, do I really got to explain these again. Snowman Eater, of course, crazy for any aggro strategy. Obviously, it's kind of a card that sees played in the main deck of a lot of Diva Hero decks, so siding it's not too far-fetched, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think. Um, but yeah, just insane versus any aggro nonsense. Anything that's just gonna try to summon guy hit, they run right into that snowman eater. They feel bad. I feel good. So I'm on three of this. I think it's very good. I think I foresaw like black wings being a bad matchup. So I definitely stacked this side with some hate for that. Uh, mine con, this should just be in the main deck actually. What the hell am I thinking? Why is this in the side? <laughs> gotta like take out friggin Trigodia or something and put this in the main because like what is this doing here this i mean it's a diva deck you can just main mine con anyway road mind crush i pretty much side these and everything i kind of already went over them limb i mean self-explanatory crazy versus fairies crazy versus light sworn bottomless and dust tornado just very generic sort of good cards um good versus bottomless good for bo versus black wings dust tornado good versus black wings both good against like a number of decks, honestly, out there. Just anything playing tons of back row. Anything plays a lot of 1,500 normal summons, you know. You know what decks there are that are out there that these are good against. A lot of these side deck cards are just super generic and self-explanatory at this point. Uh, especially now that we've reached pretty far into the video and I've already gone over a lot of stuff. So, yeah, let's just see how I would actually side. So, let's say Black Wings. We haven't, we haven't gotten to Black Wings yet. Let's say we're up against Black Wings. And we are playing this deck. How are we side in for that? Well... All right, let's just assume we're not going second. Because if we're going second, I'm bringing in Sidra probably. And Sidra's a card that I think is kind of mediocre versus Blackwings. I know a lot of people like to side it, and it's like okay, but if if I can avoid it, I don't want to side it. So I thinking I'm thinking the Snowmans, um, the bottomless is. You know what? Let's even though I said we're not going second, let's not assume we're going first either, because I would bring in Road, um, and Dust Tornado. So, if I don't know, I don't know. Well, we'll just take out Dust Shoot. I, it's like, I should have just decided whether we're going first or second. I should just flip a coin in each of these, but... Yeah, I think in general, Dust Shoot's not that good. They set their hand a lot, so whatever. Um, if we're going first, I would probably still keep it in, but... In, like, the median Blackwing game, I guess, I feel like it's not that good, but I don't know. Uh. You know, this might be one of the few matchups where I just bored out of the whole Spatian engine. Let's see what happens, actually, if we just, like, smoke screen. <laughs> uh, so how many cards is that? Because they're, like, deck dev and stuff. I could kind of see it maybe in Black Wings. I don't think I actually did it that way. But let's just pretend we're doing it that way now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's all I need to take out, right? 
like that's at least minimally what I need to take out. So maybe we'll leave does shoot in, and we need we need one more card. So if we're going first, let's say we're going first and we're leaving does shoot in. It's probably like Starlight Road or something, and we would just go with this. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. All right, finally we arrive at the Amaryllis deck, which is first deck I ever really invented, and definitely one that I still enjoy a lot. Um, so as you can see, the side deck's kind of whack in here. We're on Puppet Plant, which is mainly for heroes stuff. Um, the only reason I play this is because it's a plant that just like puts itself in grave and does like a brain con effect, which is like all right. Um, but yeah, the fact that it's a plant is is very good actually. Um, we're also on some heavy GB pre. We're on Bestiari because we play the Gazars in the extra deck. So essentially we play like four Snatch Steals and we can just take their guy and then use Bestie to contact. Or we can take their guy and attack and then like tag into Bestie, which is alright as well. Uh, on Double Sidra, Double Crow, of course, uh, True Nade. Um, we play this because it's like Spell Trap Removal that's kind of good in this like weird aggro burn strategy because it just like provides us a way to go for game and stuff and if you want you can like bounce back your eclipse spell and use it for something different as well double royal oppression um for like gbs and um maybe x sabers as well is like a rough matchup because the full helm gets a lot of pulses against this deck um but mainly for gbs there's just a lot of gb hate in this side deck because um it's like an annoying matchup and i hate that deck um, speaking of which, Bottomless is also good against that deck, but it's good against Black Wings and stuff as well. I mean, the Piercing can be annoying. And then Starlight Road and Mind Crush, um, I already, like, talked about these a lot. So, it would be fun, actually, to, like, see how I bring in the GB pre, given that there's so much of it. So maybe let's just pretend I'm side against GBs. Um, so what comes out? I mean, obviously, Gores, Morphing Jar, those are gonna have to go, right? Um, well, actually, let's think about what we bring in first. Sidra, I think, is very good in that matchup, just period, no matter what. Obviously, the Bestie's going to come in. Um, the Giant Trunade's probably going to come in, because there's a ton of back row uh, that you just got to push through. And then I think the Bottomless and the Oppression are quite good, and this is also good. So a lot of side deck cards are coming in. Um, I think Dust Shoot just sucks versus that deck. All their monsters are pretty interchangeable and whatnot. Um, so it really doesn't help that much. Uh, hmm now it becomes a question of i think plague not very good hmm so sangan's kind of eh it's not beating over anything so you don't really want to just set that against gbs right uh card destruction is like a card you can just kind of take out a lot i think and let's see how many cards is this one two three four five six seven eight nine so we need one two three four five so we need three more cards okay um that's a little bit tough. What are the three cards? We could take out... Huh. Like, the Amaryllis itself is actually a lot worse in this matchup. So maybe we could cut, like, one trade in one Amaryllis. Because the Amaryllis just gets freaking banished by Rediari, and it's super annoying. And... We can maybe, like... Take out... We got we to gotta take out one more card... I think maybe like one Raikou. I know we need to take out two more cards. No, 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 that's it. There. Um, Raikou loses hard to War Chariot, I guess. So we could probably just go with something like this. Mm, you know what? I feel like we should put one of the Raikou. I feel like three Raikou is actually the way to go. Uh, maybe we shouldn't play Road and Oppression together. Road? This, this deck's like super low back row. I feel like I shouldn't even be on the Road, to be honest. Even still, we're like low back row. So let's just go with this. I feel like the triple Raikou is actually too important. Um, yeah, War Chariot does screw it over, but it's still really good. Um, it's like one of the few cards in this deck that you set and actually just trades with a GB, um, whereas all the others don't. I do believe keeping the counters is good post-board against uh, Glad Beast. I think that they're very helpful. I think the burn plan in general helps this deck a lot against that deck. If we didn't have it, we'd just be losing. So this is probably about what I would do for post-board against GBs. All right, so that's going to be it for today. hope you guys enjoyed all of those hypothetical matchups. Um, obviously, I couldn't just like sit here and do every single one because I'd be here all day. Um, but if you have any questions about how I side against, you know, whatever with whatever, you can like let me know in the comments, and I'll maybe try to get back to you about that because 
Um, you know, I love trying to provide info about my insights regarding my own decks, so I'll be happy to, uh, to try and answer that for you. Anyway, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, become a channel member, and uh, tune in tomorrow for the next video. Peace out.